Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to On Time and On Budget, the world of BIM collaboration. My name is Juliana, and I work in marketing here at MicroCAD. And today's presenter is Phil Marshall, our applications specialist. Um, today's webinar is about understanding how projects can meet the schedule and cost objectives using BIM collaboration and the Autodesk Construction Cloud. Um, throughout the webinar, you can ask a question at any given point on the left-hand corner. Um, you can ask Phil to revisit a step or ask any questions. Um, this is your time and we want you to make the most of it. And in the upper left-hand corner, you will find links to our um, social media and website. Um, also make sure to check our YouTube channel there. We post all of our webinars at the end so you can share with colleagues or rewatch it on your own time. We will also be sending uh, the on-demand recording for all the absentees and the attendees. And without further ado, we'll pass it on to Phil. Hi, Phil. Good afternoon. So as Julian said, today we're talking about um, how BIM collaboration can help you deliver your projects on time, on schedule. This is just one of the series of webinars from MicroCAD to help our clients be more productive. So designing and constructing a building is tough. It needs people from a variety of fields and with differing expertise. Each group is responsible for their discipline, but it's dependent on others. And there's lots of information, not just the geometry of the building, but specifications, testing requirements, custom fabrications and schedules, right down to each of the millions of individual building components. And like everything else, building design projects are on tight budgets and tight schedules. Missing either the cost target or the opening date can have significant economic impact. No wonder construction sites are considered cluttered, chaotic, and unsafe. There's a lot of wastage, both material and time, as different trade crews work on the buildings, and there always seems to be some unpredictability. Something is going to cause change to the design or the construction, which makes this industry a real business risk. An often quoted McKinsey study showed that construction productivity was essentially flat, while productivity of manufacturing and the overall economy rose. All the problems we just saw were holding it back. But in the last decade, we've seen new technologies appear in the design office and in the trailer. BIM for design has been around for a long time and is clearly successful as evidenced by the inclusion of BIM requirements in project bidding. But only in the last decade have been models incorporated construction and fabrication data. And it's even more recent that workflows were created embedding RFI and change orders into the BIM model. Prefabricated modules have become common for walls, kitchens, and bathrooms. The ability to fabricate these units in a clean, controlled factory environment reduces labor costs and increases quality. By shipping these units to the site only when you're ready to install them, reduces the material inventory on site and shrinks wastes. Scanning technologies let us understand the existing conditions, whether it's a renovation or a new structure. It allows the field to verify exactly where new component, where existing components are, and it can monitor progress by scanning the completed portion of the project. But all of these need lots of data. Modules have to be designed in the context of the rest of the building, and scan point clouds have to be stored and shared. BIM, by its very nature, is data-centric, which leads us to another new technology, the cloud. Putting the data for the project in the cloud allows a single source for all partners, regardless of geographic location. Sharing that data brings the various teams together and allows collaboration processes where everyone can work with the most recent data, and the cloud never forgets. Audit trails of changes and issues ensures that outstanding items are handled, never falling into the cracks. And that is the promise of BIM collaboration, sharing data to all team members, providing tools for partners to collaborate in every phase of the project, design, pre-construction, construction, and operation. This promise has been around for a while, 
So can BIM collaboration deliver on the promise? The answer is yes. An independent survey of costs and schedules for large multidisciplinary projects shows a 29% dis decrease in design costs and a 7% decrease in overall construction costs and a reduction in overdue projects from 15% to 5%. And this is supported by other surveys with similar results. BIM collaboration does reduce costs, especially in design phase, and it reduces schedule. Time and cost, this is what matters to your clients. But the AEC industry is notoriously conservative. Getting people to change their work processes takes time. That is why even just a few years ago, this survey showed only about half of the companies were using BIM across all tasks. But those that were saw the value. And what value there is, most of the users identified more than six major benefits. Note that many of these benefits revolve around data, ensuring the most current data is available to all partners on the project, enabling access to that data, providing a secure change mechanism. These benefits accrue over the entire duration of the project, so let's talk about specific ways the user, can, user improves productivity. First, in the design stage, BIM collaboration enables fast tracking where multiple design and engineering processes overlap with the pre-construction and even maybe the construction phase. Fast tracking is only feasible where there is strong data control and close coordination amongst the partners. That kind of data control and coordination is only available with BIM collaboration. Using BIM creates visualizations much faster. Client reviews go quicker and are more unambiguous. Changes as they occur are delivered to the project members in a defined process, ensuring everyone knows about the change and its impact. BIM allows for numerical analyses of the design, whether it's structural, energy studies, lead certification, illumination studies, or shadowing. Having a true 3D model means that these analyses can predict how the real building will behave. And a good BIM model provides early material takeoff information to enable ordering of components with long lead times. Let's take a look at the design stage, how the users might use that software. So this is a live design where we have the data separated by the different disciplines, architecture, civil, electrical, fire protection, MEP, and so on. So each of these disciplines would have their own folder for their data. Permissions would ensure that users stay working in their own folder and they can't step on the toes of people in other disciplines. When we look at the architecture folder, we see that there could be multiple models. Let's look at one of them. So this is a model, a true 3D BIM model of this particular design. And notice that although we've got the 3D model for visualization, we also have the 2D representations of the drawings. So we have a true 3D BIM model as well as the drawings where more people may be comfortable interacting. And the interactions that are possible are things like redlining, markups, and creating issues. Issues, as shown in this yellow dot, is a check that something has to be looked at and needs to be resolved. So here in this particular case, the client wanted the door reversed. So this issue was created and assigned to somebody, it was assigned to Douglas with a due date, and so we can make sure that this is resolved. And you may have any number of issues going ongoing in the project. And when we're looking at one of them, we can jump immediately to a view that shows where that issue is and what it is. So this is an edge of roof, roof issue that somebody had identified and assigned. In this case, it was assigned to Sheila to take care of.
we were talking about data management, and obviously data management has to include provisions for changes. So here we're working on version 14 of this particular model. So that means that there were 13 previous versions. And in fact, I can go into history and see when each of those versions was created, who saved it, and when it was updated. But that somewhat begs the question of how do I how do I know what the changes were from one version to another? So there is a compare tool that compares version 14 with version 13. Tell me and show me what's the difference. So in this case, it shows the objects that were added in green, in this case a window. Anything that was removed is shown in red. And anything that was modified is shown in yellow. So in this case, we added a window. And that, of course, modifies the wall because it creates a new opening. And the door was modified. So what happened with the door? If I click on the object, they'll tell me that specifically that was moved nine and a half feet. So obviously what happened was the door was moved over to make room for the window. But these are the kinds of change notifications that's critical. If you were the MEP engineer, you'd want to know things that have changed that might affect my duct layout or affect the overall energy load. And with this kind of change uh, visualization, you know exactly what it is that was changed. Now, we talked about the different uh, members in the team. So the different teams were identified by their discipline. So when I'm looking at these teams, I could see here is the civil, the electrical, fire protection, all the way down, and I have architectural. So all of these teams are working together, sharing their data. They're do doing the work on their own data in their own folder, and then when they're ready to share it with other people, they take a conscious step to share it, and that's called a release package. So if we look at the architectural release packages, we see there is a number of them. And if I look at the most recent one, this is version 14 of the architectural model. So the release packages from the different disciplines would show the work that they have done. Hey, Phil, we have a question. Sure. <sighs> um, it's from Greg Covey. It says, I noticed that your bio says that your knowledge of Autodesk tools notably does not include AutoCAD. Why is that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, someone caught me. That's that's fine. Um, the, and the reason for not gaining any knowledge of AutoCAD is that uh, I'm, I'm an ancient person. I got involved in CAD CAM way, way back in 1982 with a 3D system called uh, AD2000 or Anvil, which predates AutoCAD. So once you start working in 3D, you just can't go back to 2D anymore. So um, yeah, I was working with these 3D systems, especially on the CAM side, and AutoCAD just at that time was 2D only, and it just was uh, more or less looked like a toy compared to the 3D systems at that time. So I never got involved in AutoCAD. So you call me he's been that. using, sorry, he says he's been using AutoCAD since 1990. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I got some years on you. <laughs> Definitely. Thank you, Phil. Yeah, yeah, I've never had that question before, but thank you for bringing out how, how ancient I am. <laughs> <laughs> I had to read it. Sorry. No, no. That's... <laughs> All right. So we talked about the design stage and how the, the, the data modeling enables people to share the information amongst the various teams. Um, but let's move on to the next stage. We're talking about the coordination phase. So in coordination, that really occurs throughout the design phase, but it peaks the most when you get to detailed design. This detailed design nears completion. Here we're juggling the needs of all of the trades in order to have a constructible design. BIM collaboration provides a near real-time interference checking ability to see where different systems clash. Users can manage the clashes, assign them to individuals for resolution with a defined due date. 
working with many disciplines can be difficult as you combine their models in a single federated model. And that's what BIM collaboration can do. While each discipline continues to be responsible for their own work, the project manager can combine the models to ensure coordination. Issues during design are common. In a BIM collaboration world, when someone sees something that should be addressed, they can create an issue and assign it to the specific person with a due date. We saw that just a few minutes ago. The project manager can review all the outstanding issues with the high overdue ones highlighted in order to make sure everything is resolved quickly. So let's take a quick look at interference checking. So we were looking at the teams, but let's say we want to, as a project manager, look at the coordination issues. So if I want to do a coordination check between the architectural objects and the MEP objects, and finding out how many interferences they are, and they found 78. Let's look at the 78. And this is the first one. We see the air handler unit is interfering with the ceiling. So evidently either the architect moved the ceiling up or the uh, MEP engineer put the air handler unit at the wrong elevation. Uh, and if I look at the next interference, that's another air handler unit uh, interfering with the ceiling. So I can solve both of those problems by moving the ceiling. So what I can do is create an issue. Remember we saw issues as a little while ago. I can create an issue to address both of those clashes and uh, assign it to someone to resolve. So as we were saying before, you can create, find these interferences, create the issues to resolve them, and always the project manager can review the issues and see here's a case of the air handler unit needs to be moved if we're going to move the AHU rather than move the ceiling. And here's uh, another case where we could change the plenum height for moving the ceiling assets. So we have different solutions uh, possibly for different wings of the building. And we talked about the project manager having knowledge of what is outstanding in the project and what's going on. So what we can do is let's take a look at the home page, which is probably where the project manager is going to spend their time. And it's a summary of what's going on on this particular project. So here we have the issues are outstanding on that particular project. We've got some design issues here. And we've got the design packages that are available for review. So. This is where, as a design engine, as the project manager, I could look at this and say, well, I haven't seen a package from the MEP engineer for a week, so let's me give him a call and find out why we don't have updates there. So the project manager has a quick and easy way of seeing the status of what's going on on their project. Then as we move into pre-construction, this is where planning is done to ensure that construction goes smoothly and all the required tools, people, and equipment are available where and when they are needed. Fast tracking here means making construction sequencing decisions before the design is completed. But by having the project managers aware of what is ready and what is not, the pre-construction actions can be focused on those that are ready. BIM collaboration provides the data for more accurate and complete material takeoffs from the, the BIM model. And we guarantee this is going to be correct because it's all coming from the same source as the design. At this time also, the project team can decide what modules make sense for the project and can work with the fabricator to plan the manufacturing of the modules. All of the construction planning can be done visualizing the process which especially benefits construction scheduling as the planners can see the state of the building, the access for the equipment, lay down areas, and the reach of cranes. So we could look at an animation of a piece of equipment on the site at a particular point in time. So we can use the construction schedule to know how much has been constructed. We can check for clearance of the equipment, and we can ensure that this is a safe lift uh, for the, the equipment that's going up on the roof. Construction is where many of the benefits of BIM collaboration are. 
fast tracking again, only possible with strong data control in a truly collaborative environment helps out the construction by sequencing the, uh, the portions of the building that are ready for construction. Out in the field, there can't be any doubt that the drawings being used in the most recent and approved version with any change orders already incorporated. And BIM Collaborate delivers that with the data management functionality. And of course, the viewing of the drawings and the data in the field can be with uh, devices, laptops, or tablets to, dis to display all of that information directly from the model. Having the 3D model allows mapping of safety issues and or risks. Checklists verify that workers have the right safety equipment, the right training for the job, and stresses the importance of working safely and quality checklists ensure no defect is overlooked. The schedule developed in pre-construction delivers all the material on site just in time to minimize confusion at the site, prevent avoidable hazards from stacked material, and reduces material handling. Routine reports concerning the site can be largely automated using the BIM data. Equipment in the BIM model can have COBE data preloaded COBE is a standard for information about the equipment. So, so the information needed for ordering, installation, setup, and testing is all available with the model. Finally, commissioning checklists can ensure that the owner is satisfied with the overall project and nothing is overlooked. Hey, Bill, we have another question. Okay. Um, it says, what experience is required to participate in coordination meetings, and is there training available to prepare an individual to be able to participate? That, that's a really good question because the coordination meetings, and I've been in plenty of them, they vary widely depending on who is running them. So there's a large number of companies who are really knowledgeable in BIM who run coordination meetings very smoothly and assign the uh, requirements, the, the changes to the people who have to do the changes very uh, in a very fast manner. And then I've seen coordination meetings that devolve into arguments over, do we move the pipe or do we move the duct? Um, so clearly it depends on the companies and the organizations that are in the meeting. As far as attending those coordination meetings, you're attending representing your particular discipline and your particular work. So what's required in terms of knowledge is that you understand the design that you're bringing to the table. You understand why that design is the way it is, why you ran the pipe down the middle of the corridor, why you did the duct on the left side and the equipment on the right side. So you'd have to understand your own design process. and Usually, uh, everyone brings a laptop to coordination meeting and makes the changes required at the meeting. So that is very quick to resolve any kind of interferences. So as far as, as knowledge and expertise, you would need to be able to use a, a BIM software to make modifications to your design. Um, but other than knowing your own job and knowing how to do the, why the design was put together, there's no special requirements to, to attend a coordination meeting, um, except the desire to be part of the team and to solve problems. Does that sound like that addresses the question? I think so. Thank you, Phil. All right. So we, did, we were talking about construction and the benefits that people get out from the construction phase. All right, so what can we say about BIM collaboration now that we have some real world examples of use and some real world data? Um, first, the, the benefits are real. Uh, we've been talking about BIM for 20 years. We've been talking about the impact on construction for 10 years. They're real. Um, and people are using them more and more. Uh, the people who are using BIM collaboration verify that these benefits are measurable and they are, they, they are making changes in the way that their processes work. From the increased penetration of use, it's clear that it's becoming the norm, meaning that organizations who want to participate in projects 
have to step up to the bar and be part of the, the BIM team. Uh, organizations without BIM collaboration capabilities put themselves at a competitive disadvantage. The benefits in cost and time speak for themselves. 29% in design costs, 7% in overall costs, a big reduction in projects that are behind schedule. These are all things that uh, the clients are looking for. So you could be involved in the BIM collaboration process and also deliver your projects on time and on budget. All right. Um, so at this point, let's check and see if there's any other questions that are outstanding. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, what does it take to get started with this? That, that's a good question yeah. uh, be, kind of because it, it isn't something that uh, someone can do without a, a thoughtful process. And it isn't typically done at the project level, but at the company level. So as a decision of your company management, it has to come from above to be effective. They would need to make the decision that they want to invest in BIM, cord and BIM collaboration and to participate in that market space. As I mentioned before, if it's a competitive disadvantage to not participate, there's more and more pressure on the senior management to make that investment. The investment will consist of making sure you have the right software, typically a BIM authoring tool like Revit uh, and whatever um, community coordination and collaboration software that works in the cloud, like some of the uh, Autodesk construction cloud offerings and then the training on those tools to make sure that you use them effectively. Um, other than that, there is a lot. If you, your hardware, if you're doing any kind of heavy duty CAD now, your hardware is probably adequate for doing the, uh, the authoring of BIM tools. So it isn't gonna be a hardware cost, it's gonna be software and um, training. And then an understanding that the first project that you execute on BIM collaboration will probably be not as productive as you are in the second project and the third project. So senior management needs to recognize there will be a ramp up phase, but that can go by fairly quickly. Thank you, Phil. Um, second question. Okay, um, can we use AutoCAD in the BIM process? <laughs> Here, here's AutoCAD again. Okay. Um, no, no, actually, a lot of people are using AutoCAD now, and I'm not denigrating the software. It, it does its job very well. It's just it's not designed to be a BIM authoring tool. It's not designed for having multiple people accessing the database, accessing the models as they're doing work. It just wasn't designed that way. Um, so I, I guess the correct answer to that is no, AutoCAD is not a BIM authoring tool, you really need a BIM authoring tool to participate in this process. However, having said that, there are some things that AutoCAD is great at, and you can do that part of the work in AutoCAD and then just uh, share that design with other people, not to have them change the design, but just to have them realize that the design is there. Some of the schematic layouts, uh, some of the ladder diagrams in electrical, uh, maybe some of the uh, schematic uh, system designs, those those may be done in AutoCAD because you're not cooperating with other organizations or other disciplines to make those happen. You're doing it all in-house. So using AutoCAD or any tool uh, is fine as long as uh, you then share that result with everyone. But in terms of actually authoring a building design, you know, you need a, an authoring tool like Revit. you, Phil. Um, another question. I hear horror stories about the cloud. Is my data, my data safe? Yeah, the, 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 the short answer is yes, the data is safe. Um, Autodesk uses um, Amazon uh, Web Services and banks use that, governments use that, police departments use that. So the data is safe, it's secure. And it's available. Um, 
if you're concerned about the um, having that data available 10 years from now, 20 years from now, and then those are valid concerns. Then at the end of the project, one of the things you can do is you can archive the project and then you can download it to your own um, network and save it on your network storage uh, or move it to your own cloud storage with a different cloud. So there's plenty of tools are available to move the data around, but I wouldn't be too concerned with the Autodesk cloud storage. Um, it, it's secure, it's fast, and it's reliable. Thank you, Phelan. Um, I have another question here. Um, bear with me, it's quite large. Um, it says, we work on large consultant teams with, <clears throat> with VIM, ACC, out of this docs, et cetera. <clears throat> so we understand the value of these tools. The problem we are seeing is a continued gap between the architect's Revit building model and the site design, which is usually prepared by the civil engineer with civil 3D. As a landscape architect, we work closely with the, with the civil engineers, so we are tied to using their dot, uh, .dwg files for your deliverables. Um, do you have any advice on how to get better bridge this gap between the Revit model and the sidecat files? Are you bringing in the the civil model to Revit so you have them coordinated in a single federated model? Let, let me let me address either way. So if you are accessing the civil 3d model and it is a dwg it's based on autocad but it's a 3d model with a lot of intelligence if you bring that in and share it with the uh, and create the federated model with the revit model and the civil 3d model now you can have in one model visually what it, that all ties together and with revit if you have multiple revit models you can set up your coordinate system so it ties to benchmarks in the civil 3d file so if you have different buildings for example you're doing a campus you can link each of the buildings to its own um, benchmark point on the civil 3d file so that would bring that together in terms of doing the, the landscaping um, you certainly can move surfaces back and forth between civil and revit so you could be looking at Revit and doing your landscaping, or you could look at Civil and doing your landscaping. You have the surfaces in either case, and those surfaces are associative. So if they get updated, they would update everywhere. Um, but I do agree that the Civil interface and the Civil 3D uh, collaboration tools aren't as strong as Revit's, but they are there. So you can share the Revit model and other teams can look at it and work with it. This this might be something we should should take off offline and get uh, my civil expert on also to to address how that could all come together. No, but that's a great overview. Thank you, Phil. And also, we're running out of time, but we have one more question. Sure. Um, does the viewer enable looking at the two D plans combined with the three D model? Absolutely. Um, let me show you. So this is the in the docket management when we're pulling out a model like the one I was just looking at. By default, you get the three D model. So this is three D BIM, but you also get the two D views. So this are, these are the sheets that result from this model. And when the person who's responsible for this model publishes the model to share it with other people, they can choose what 2D uh, drawings or views are shared with other people. So maybe they don't want to share the area plan. So they can choose which of these are ready for sharing. So the person who is responsible for the model can control what gets out to other teams. But absolutely, that what gets shared is both the 3D and the 2D. Thank you, Phil. 
Okay, and, and as a reminder for everybody, if you want to learn these topics in detail, you can always take a custom training with Phil or someone else on our team. Um, we also offer group classes online, so be sure to be checking the MicroCAD website um, for future webinars. Uh, we have a coming next um, tomorrow at 2 p.m. It's come to BAM, modeling and Revit. Then we have on February 16 at 2 p.m. again, 10 out of those dogs, tips and tricks in 30 minutes. And then we have for February 30, 23rd at 1 p.m., real-time rendering with Revit and Enscape. Um, so yeah, you have our contacts there. Don't hesitate um, to reach out. Um, and yeah, thank you everybody for attending and thank you, Phil. That was a wonderful presentation. Thank you everyone for your time. Bye-bye.